This is the MMA Discussion Podcast number three. We had a third one before, but it got fucked up. So we're going to do this one with me and Chris Shemina making his official debut, hopefully. Chris, what's up? How's it going? Making his MMA D debut, finally. Got you on. And I know that this is perfect timing because we need to rant about the release of a UFC fighter who you have, what's the word, hyped up to no, uh, to no limit. Jake, the striking god, Shields, and he just got released. We heard about it today. What's your take on this, Chris? Um, I woke up this morning, and I got a text <laughs> from our admin, JP, and uh, I can actually bring it up right now. He said... Oh, my God, I saw the screenshot. It was hilarious. Yeah, he said exactly, hey, buddy, dot, 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 it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what could that possibly mean? And then, like, uh, underneath yeah. it, I scroll through because obviously I missed the conversation the whole night. Uh, that Jake, <laughs> I saw Jake Shield something. I was like, what the fuck happened? Like, did, did he get in a car accident? I was like, what happened? And then I felt like it was a family member, actually. And I go through, I open up Facebook, and it's like he's been cut. I'm like, there's no fucking way. I was like, there's no fucking way he got cut. That's just ridiculous. After one loss, which, I mean, obviously it was a fluke. You should have won that, but this. <laughs> I mean, obviously they're protecting all their fighters. I mean, no one can stand with them. No one can go to the ground with them. It's just ridiculous. But you know, <laughs> he goes out to make more money, and I hope he goes out to get more championships in different organizations and stuff like that. Best of luck to him. But in my opinion, this cut complete bullshit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean. I don't have that exact argument that you happen to have. <laughs> My argument is the guy's done uh, done decent in his uh, in his in his UFC career while not being exciting uh, that much to the fans. Um, the thing about it is uh, it, it kind of takes away the gist of of what the fighters are supposed to be in the UFC for. If they're the best in the world, they should be there. Jake Shields has proven to be the best in the world. He's done so much throughout his career, and he's done, and he's beaten so many top names. I mean, one of the one of the most impressive wins I'd ever seen him in was uh, against Dan Henderson. He beat Dan Henderson. First of all, he beat Dan Henderson. <laughs> Come on, he took an H bomb in the first round, came back to win the rest of it. He's fought in guys uh, George St. Pierre, Jake Gellenberger. He has wins over Damian Maya and Tyron Woodley in his la and two of his last three fights. That's including the Lombard win, um, and. Uh, I just think it's it's a little insane that they would cut him when prior to that loss he had won three of his last uh, four unless unless you decide to count the Ed Herman no contest which was an, uh, which was um, originally a win he got popped for some uh, drug I don't know what That's it was debatable. that's debatable <laughs> Uh, I thought I thought it was a bad cut I thought I was just as upset when they cut uh, Yushin Yushin was only coming off was actually coming off a win going into that fight with Jacare, Ray, then gets cut. John Fitch comes off one win, gets cut. It's really weird that these fighters who are mainstays in, in the UFC, uh, who have been with them for so long, get cut. Um, and especially guys who have fought for the title, stuff like that. Jake Shields, John Fitch, Yushin Okami, they've all fought for the title. And that's just insane that they're getting that all these guys are getting cut, and it's just it's 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 insane. And I and I'm reading some of the comments from uh, from the post that Zach put out. I know Zach's one of the people kind of okay with this, I guess you could say <laughs> that that this has happened. But um, you know, I, I just think uh, as a competitor, he's uh he's done well. I mean, he hasn't looked as impressive as he used to when you would say maybe it was his prime when he was just tapping guys left and right. I mean, you look at his record as far as I understand, he might still have more uh what is it? He has 10 submissions, 3 knockouts out of 29 wins, so he's about split up with his wins and decisions. Um but yeah, around 2006 to 2000, no, wait. 2005 Till 2011, he was undefeated for six straight years. In that winning, that 15 fight win streak he had, he had finished nine of them. That was probably around his prime. He fought for Elite XC, Strike Force, so it's debated whether you agree with those wins or not, whether they were in his prime. I believe that was his prime. He beat Dan Henderson in that streak. Um, 
I don't like it. I didn't like that the that the cut happened. Uh, I think, especially when his last two wins were against guys that are in the top ten, and then he loses to a guy who's now in the top ten because of beating him. I mean, you cut Shields, you kind of take away the win of Lombard as well, in my opinion. Anything you want to elaborate on there, Chris? Um, I mean, besides how I feel, I mean, you look at some other fighters who are. I mean, they're on, like, three-plus losing streaks, but they're still around. It's just a little ridiculous. And we actually, um, we talked about this a little bit before the podcast, people are listening, is that uh, we were wondering, well, maybe it's a money thing. Like, how much is he making? And I believe the number that we saw, or at least the estimation, was, like, what? 95, 95? 95 win, 95? Um, he didn't win, so he just made 95. But um, uh, based on uh, other bonuses that are given, that there's this website, MMAPayhouse.com. You can check it out if you want to believe it. Yeah, I don't endorse it or anything, <laughs> um, but just check it out. According to them, uh, Jake Shields also gets certain bonus money. Uh, you, uh, not that I remember exactly what it is, but go ahead and check out MMAPayouts.com. They'll tell you themselves. Um, they estimated he made about a little under a quarter million, so 250000 by the end of the night with sponsors and all that stuff. So it's a pretty big payday, but those are by sponsors. It's not the UFC paying them all that money. Yeah. They just probably paid him the 95 Gs and said, all right, you're on your way. Um, as far as where Jake goes from here... I don't see Bellator picking him up. I mean, um, uh, I mean, if they were if they were willing to let their welterweight champion Ben Askren go, I doubt they take they pick up Jake Shields. I I would think the World Series of Fighting would pick him up. Maybe they're more fair about that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I just think it's uh, I think it was a little off that that this whole cut happened. I, I really just uh, I'm wondering what, what other cuts are going to happen coming up because I thought it would end with Yushin. It hadn't happened in a while. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I mean, I, it makes you wonder what other fight. I mean, you got to think it puts into fighters' heads. Are they really safe after one loss now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you look at it and they... Unless Bellator put out that big offer, they would have let Gilbert Melendez go. Mm-hmm. For that, uh, for what he was wanting, uh, for what he was asking for, and I mean, he, in many fans' eyes, beat Ben Henderson. Even though officially he didn't, he put on a good fight. He really made it look like I mean, because Ben Henderson, I mean, he had some close fights, but he really didn't have a fight that looked like that yet in the UFC up until against Gilbert Melendez. And then he puts on just an absolute amazing fight against Diego Sanchez. I mean, not just him, but Diego Sanchez, of course, too, is responsible for that. And well, you're actually asking for too much money. We're actually willing to let you go. And then Bellator makes the offer. He's like, oh, fuck that. He's not going to go to Bellator. He's going to stay here. And that's what happened. So it's like, even if you are in, like a pretty good, uh, you, you have a good win. You put on a great fight. It's like, if you're asking for too much money, you're still not safe, which I just find a little ridiculous. I'm hoping Jake Shields goes to World Series of Fighting. I mean, I just see there being more or like better competition there. You can see him, whichever division he wants to go with, you can see him up against... Uh, Steve Carl, Josh Berkman, um, Hector Lombard. What World Series of Fighting now? In Hector, Hec- oh, not Hector Lombard. <laughs> Who's Mark Paul Harris? Yeah, My bad. Paul Harris <laughs> or Fitch. I mean, Paul Harris and Fitch going on it right now in July, I believe. July, but, yes, for World Series of Fighting World 11. Yeah, or you could see him go to 185, and there could be a rematch against Okami. There could yeah. be some interesting fights there. Mm hmm. And, I mean, you know, World Series of Fighting, they're on NBC, so if NBC's back in the bill, you know, they got money to pay them. So, yeah. it'll I be mean, pretty good. I mean, best of luck to him. I just think it's terrible that uh, we won't see fights, I mean, with him in the UFC, at least any time soon, unless they decide to re-sign him. I mean, who knows? Maybe there's something like, oh, my God, like, maybe Eric Silva got injured, and they're like, okay, Jake, we, we changed our mind, we'll sign you right now if you go and fight Matt Brown. I mean, there could always something like that can happen, but who knows? Best of luck to him. Yeah, crappy cut. I know. I know. Oh, flans, f- flans, fans can be split about this one. Uh, I just think it sucks. I've met Jake Shields twice. Uh, I live here in, in. I've lived in Northern California. I've met him a couple times out there. Seems like an awesome dude. And um, uh, all together, I just. Uh, I mean, I wasn't surprised when Lombard won. Won. Uh, I was surprised he won a decision. <laughs> that part was uh, surprising, but. 
the fact that he got cut afterwards, I was just uh, was thinking, where does he go from here? What can he do from here? It, feel, it feels like the UFC took the rug right out from under him to really get any traction for himself going again. Uh, yeah. Un, unfair cut, in my opinion, and we'll just leave it at that. We'll move on to the next topic. We're, we're actually going to talk about rankings now. Speaking of Jake Shields, we have Walter Rate rankings. We're gonna, me and uh, any, any other admins that join on the podcast will be talking about rankings. Chris, making your debut. I allowed him to pick the division that we want to talk about. We'll also play match ma- matchmaker here. And what better one to start off with than pro- possibly the most exciting division in the UFC right now, the Walter Rate division. Let's start off. We have Johnny Hendricks is injured right now. Won't be able to come back until around September, October. We've also talked, uh, you look at numbers two and four, Tyrone Woodley taking on Roy McDonald. Roy being number two, Tyrone being number four. Um, they fight next, and that fight probably, as I've, as we discussed in our, in our debut podcast, will probably be the fight that determines who fights Johnny Hendricks later on this year. Um, that could probably happen at 175, 176, uh, the, the, the pay-per-views. Mm, well, first off, what do you think about that fight, Roy Mack and uh, Tyron Woodley? Um, it all depends on how that first round goes. If the first round, Woodley gives it everything he has, but doesn't finish Rory, granted there's only two more rounds left to go, but... I mean, he saw in the fight against Condit, he was already looking a little winded in that second round. I mean, not terrible, but he was already looking like he was a little gassed. So it all depends on how the first round goes. Personally, and I make it no secret, I don't like Rory McDonald. I really don't like him that much. <laughs> and you might say that I'm picking him just because I don't like I mean, I'm picking against him just because I don't like him. But I see if I had to put my last $20 on someone, which is how I, unless I'm picking just like, you know, just out with my heart. I always look at um, bets that way. So I'm always going to pick with, if I had a little bit of money left, I need to make it. Who am I going to bet on? I'm going to bet on Tyron Woodley by knockout. I just see Rory not being able to take him down. He'll probably try a Jake Shields game plan, which is to grind it out and not give him enough um, movement to throw a fist. But I see Woodley being able to knock out McDonald. Hmm. Well, I mean, uh, if you look at... Uh... The, the the losses that Matt, that Roy Mack has. It's funny because he's lost to Carlos Condit and he has lost to um, Robbie Lawler. And those are two guys that are aggressive. They come forward. They bring it a lot of the time. Um, and, 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 and one of the interesting things about the Robbie Lawler fight with, with Roy was that it showed Roy's weakness. He's, he tends to go out there and be technical and precise and make direct moves and and go in there, and, and, and it seems like he needs to think about things like that. When he fought Jake, Jake gave him all the time in the world to just to think and strategize and think about what to do, what not to do, and it was just, it, it played into Rory's style. I think Robbie Lawler never gave him much room to breathe in that fight. It was still a close fight, but uh, Rory always stayed in his face, and, and, and uh, or I mean, Robbie always stayed in Rory's face, and Rory was forced to always have to think about what he does next have to think about not getting hurt and it and it allowed and it, or, and it stopped him stooped him really from not use, using his own game plan not using his own offense he was playing more defense near the end of the fight and um and even then he got dropped i think it's guys that push the pace on him that push him that make him uh that that really show a a, a, a key aggressiveness are able to um, are able to uh, to really stoop his game plan, which is to go in there and be technical. And if you make the fight n- uh, non technical for him, I think Rory kind of doesn't know doesn't know how to be non technical. He's not a brawler. He's not a guy that goes in there and just swings through the fences. He's never really done that. He's a he's a he's a guy who goes in there, tries to be tactical. And if a guy can stop him from being tactical, I think you stop him right there. Um, uh, so I think if, if Woodley is a strong wrestler, he's a strong dude in, in general. Uh, his cardio has always been questioned. Uh, it's, it was questioned in this fight with Condit because people just needed to point at something to, to complain about with that win. I felt that uh, that his cardio looked fine. I felt that his punching power was fine. I mean, look, think of the shots that he put on Condit. I mean, he made Condit just head back up, you know what I mean? He just had the... And then took, I mean, left hook some Hendricks all day. I mean, so Condit's got one hell of a chin. I mean... Yeah, I don't, I don't see... Uh, I don't... <laughs> I think if he puts the, those kind of hands on Rory, those same punches, I think Rory goes down. At uh, least gets dropped. I mean, Condit, Condit didn't even get dropped, but you could just tell that shit hurt. 
you could just tell that he was hurting and, and it was just bam just out you could just tell that guy has power he's a strong wrestler he's his striking has just gotten uh just loads better than it ever was before now that he's in the UFC and that's a that's a great thing to see from him he's really uh mixing up his game better than he how he used to have it in strike force where he was just you know implement out. yeah implementing a wrestling based uh uh style of fighting now he's mixing it up really well i mean uh against Condi, he took him down he actually that's how he hurt his leg he took him down he uh boxed it up and he and he just seemed to be winning every part of that fight i see woodley winning this fight if not by a decision, decision, then yeah, probably a, 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 a knockout in maybe round two. I see him beating up Rory enough to where he comes out into the second round too, too, too messed up to really go on any further if he takes any more punches like that. I think Woodley takes it round two knockout. Uh, Walter Wade ranks. He's going to move down. Who's number one? Let's look at who's yeah, number one. Feet. Look at that. Robbie Lawler, still number one. And man, Let's look at who's yeah, number one. Look at that. Robbie Lawler, still number one. And man, that guy has some balls to come out of that fight, that 25 minute war with Johnny Hendricks, to come back nearly a month later to take on Jake Ellenberger on short notice, taking the place of Tarek Safadine on UFC 173, I believe. Yes, and he, and man, that's a, wow, that's a great fight. That's a, I mean, Jake Ellenberger, I mean, he's been questionable as of late. I don't know, I don't know how you see, how do you see this fight, Chris? I don't know, it's hard, I mean, Robbie hasn't had much, I mean, all the credit in the world to him, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, he did not have an easy fight against Hendricks, and like you just said, I mean, to come out after, it's like, oh, you need someone to fight? Okay, I'll fight. I mean, yeah, granted, he wants to get back on track, but he needs time to rest, too, and that could play some sort of effect in the fight. Jake Ellenberger, I mean, his last fight, well, he's he's been supposed to fight for, like, the last little while now. He's just been injured. I mean, he's supposed to fight Sapodine, and then that went through, and now he's supposed to fight Sapodine again, and that went through, and now he's going to fight Lawler. Um, his last fight, Name I'm sure, as he knows, he's, he, does, he doesn't like how he performed. I'm mm -hmm. sure of it. And I'm sure he wants to come out. And if he takes out Robbie Lawler, he could definitely be sitting next after Woodley or McDonald in line. Like, yeah. that already puts him pretty damn high up. Yeah, the fact that the number one ranked guy at Walterweight decided to take a fight at short notice does good for him. But it, it could also be a, a big loss if he loses the fight. It's a it's a win win for Jake altogether because he gets to fight the number one guy now instead of fighting Tarek Safadine, who is ranked. Let's see where he's ranked. Nine. To number nine, yeah, I mean that's just a big uh, step up for Jake, but it, it's a big win-win for him altogether because now he gets to fight the number one guy. He wins that fight, man. That guy is a, uh, you know, he's 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 got he's got some bragging rights to be uh, uh, in the mix-up with all these names that are already in the mix-up, such as Rory McDonald, Tyron Woodley, uh, uh, Hector Lombard, and Matt Brown, and now he, he implement he puts his name in there now. That's that's impressive, and that's definitely going to be uh, an interesting fight altogether. I can't wait to see it. I'm pretty sure someone gets knocked out. <laughs> I find it hard to believe that these guys don't put hands on each other and don't go down at some point. I would think uh, Jake would probably be more wanting to be more uh, wrestle savvy for this fight, seeing as how it won. It many debate that it won Johnny the fight. Who knows? I just think it. Um, I just think uh, Jake needs to be able to mix it up as well as he can in there to avoid uh, the power shots of Robbie and to and to just make it make it hard for Robbie to 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 be able to to see any of his uh, attacks coming. He needs to be unpredictable. With Robbie Lawler, you, you never know. I mean, to a degree, he's predictable, but at the same time, he really mixes it up in there striking wise because he's he's implemented kicks. He's implemented a. Uh, um, you know, certain types of, uh, of ground and pound tactics into his game as of late. We haven't seen it in his last two fights, uh, except for in the Roy fight. Um, but uh, he, I mean, you, you kind of know what's coming if you strike with him. Jake has to know that. He needs to be able to be prepared to be unpredictable. Uh, it's a great fight, though. I can't wait to see it. Number three on the rankings here at welterweight is Carlos Condit, who we probably won't see for a while <laughs> after I'll that. Uh, what do you think, maybe like next year? Probably, man. And that just sucks because it's Carlos Condit and everybody loves watching him. Everybody was picking that guy to be the next in line should he beat Woodley and would have made things a lot easier uh, for the uh, the UFC to know which match they were going to put up. 
with Carlos Condit out, um, definitely, uh, definitely sucks because you just want to think about all these fights he could have afterwards. I would think, uh, when he comes back, maybe a fight with, uh, Matt Brown. I mean, depends on where Matt Brown is. His fight's not until the, the summer, I believe. Um, it's actually like, um, I think it's May, actually. Matt Brown's May? fighting Eric Silver in May. Yeah. May? Let's look that up. I don't know. Man. But with Carlos Condit, I mean, it's just it's really hard to say what's going to happen with the welterweight picture even six months from now, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's just so many big names, so many fights already lined up. We're talking about it right now. It's hard to play matchmaker right now when you have all these fights uh, set up right now. Let's see. Yeah, that fight will be in August, you liar. Wait, him and Eric Silva? <laughs> I believe so, yes. Let me see. One second. I, I doubt that. Oh, yes. That's a lie. It is May. I'm looking at a different... I'm looking oh. at the car that we were, we're going to talk about later on. I'm sorry. Um, it will be in Cincinnati, Ohio. Check that out. Man, I really wish uh, Rich Franklin was on that card. That kind of sucks that he's not, but I understand why. He hasn't announced anything as far as retirement, right? No, I mean, he as, as far as Rich Franklin goes real quick, he... Uh, He's announced that he wants to honor his last fight on his contract, and uh, and I'm cool with that. I would definitely like to see him fight one more time, uh, especially as long as we know that it's the last time that he's fighting, he's making it known. So, I mean, let him honor it out and let him fight, and that'd be fun to watch. Uh, he's always a, a fun guy to watch. He always puts it out there. So, uh, he has a lot of exciting fights, and, man, I'm just, uh, I can't wait to see that fight, especially. Um but as far as Carlos Condit, I don't know. I mean, if that fight is in May, then yeah, it kind of throws a wrench in that because Carlos might be out until the end of this year or the beginning of next year. So, hmm. Yeah, I mean, the the, the, the the injury wasn't as bad as, say, like GSP's or or, uh, or Dominic Cruz's injury. It wasn't that bad. I mean, uh, it wasn't like a full-on tear. It was just like, uh, it was his meniscus more than anything else as well. And, um... So he should be back six to eight months, last I read. Um, that's an exciting, I mean, just the thought of Carlos Condon and Matt Brown was so salivating for last year in, on the Fox card when that got called off, man. Everybody was bummed. Uh, I still want to see that fight. It's a great fight. And if, uh, if Matt Brown needs a number one contender, contender fight when he gets back, one against Carlos Condon, it kind of makes sense. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where everybody's at at Welterweight when Carlos Condon returns. I'm going to move on down now to, that's the top five we've talked about just now. Hector Lombard, the guy who got the infamous win against Jake Shields, who is no longer with the UFC. I feel like it hurts him that Jake Shields is no longer with the UFC. Um, but man, Hector Lombard, hmm. The, him against Robbie Lawler would have been a sick fight. Yeah, I think that would have been great, but I mean, you know, what's happened's happened. So, uh, depending... In all honesty, I see Matt Brown making quick work of Eric Silva. That's just how I predict it. Because really? Really? Now, I know we didn't post this up, but what I said on the third podcast, which is like, you know, lost in fucking space now, is that <laughs> I see Eric Silva as a choker. He had the Fitch fight, and I think too many people looked at that Johnny Hendricks loss and thought too little of Fitch after that, which I'm not going to lie, I did. And that's why I thought many people hyped up Eric Silva as always going to knock out John Fitch. And that was his big opportunity and he choked. Granted, not really surprising they lost, but that's just one example. They had, what else have? Oh, the fight against Dong Young Kim. I mean, Dong Young Kim, he's been making some moves. I don't know what happened to him, but he's just like a knockout. It's funny because in that fight, they were like, oh, Dong Young Kim hasn't gotten a fish since 2008. And then, bam! What did he do to Eric Silva? Dropped a dong bomb on him. Yeah. <laughs> the dong was, bomb. The dong bomb. A flash Ooh. knockout. It was beautiful. They were both throwing. Silva missed. Dong Young Kim landed. Like Silva dropped boom. where he was. Like he, he was like he went just straight down. He didn't fly backwards. Dong hit him, and Eric just stayed in place but went down. <laughs> he just sunk into his own body. Yeah, and then it was just so, like, man, what a crazy knockout. They yeah. were like, oh, okay, that was awesome, but it was probably a fluke, and then a few months later, just spinning back elbow knockout on yeah. uh, Hathaway. Just amazing. Yeah, and that's what I think. I think Hector Lombard, I was going to say this, Hector Lombard versus Dumb Young Kim makes a lot of sense. 
I think that fight would be great. Both guys needing to come up the rankings. I think a win over Dong Young Kim does good for Hector since Dong Young has looked so well as of late. They're both judo practitioners, one looking a lot stronger than the other as far as physical strength goes. They're both judo practitioners. They're both starting to get their own knockout wins as of late. Um, I think that's a great fight to make. I think Dong Young presents a, a, a very interesting challenge for Hector. Uh, yeah. Just, just this is the the same kind that Yushin did, but this one's more exciting considering Dong Young Kim can actually you, you feel the the threat of him possibly knocking out Lombard in that fight now. That because now it's good. like Dong Young Kim just hit a switch where it's like I want to knock people out now. It's amazing. You saw like a little bit of that in what was it, Sean Pearson, the fight where he was just constantly looking for that yeah crane the kick. the crane kick i was like what the f he actually dropped him with one of those too oh, he stunned him and he almost had him too but he couldn't finish him that yeah and then he's just getting these finishes left and right but the reason why i brought that up about matt brown and eric silva and then we eventually went off on that was i like i said i felt like he's gonna make quick work of silva i feel like silva's gonna crumble to the pressure so if Matt Brown comes out of it fairly unscathed and is willing to, especially if he knows a win over I mean a win over Hector Lombard means something because now he's fairly high ranked and now the top five especially is pretty cluttered. So I mean a win over Lombard that could be like his move to be next in line, and then maybe the winner of that fight could fight the winner of Lawler and Ellenberger for the next up on the title. But that's a fight I would like to see is um, Brown versus Lombard. Dong Young Kim versus Lombard. I like that too, but my first pick would be Brown versus Lombard if he's ready and willing. But if he's not, I'm perfectly happy with Kim versus Lombard too. It makes sense that Brown and, and, and Hector could fight uh, the next fight. I think Hector could fight uh, Brown next fight. Say Brown wins against Eric Silva. That fight could happen next. The reason being is because Hector is a humongous human being for 170. I think he needs a lot of time to really prepare for a weight cut like that. And uh, I think uh, once, and the fight's in May, so that's next month, a month from now. You know, if, if Matt Brown's rearing and ready to go and not too injured off the solo fight, they could just quickly uh, match that fight up. Hector would have had a lot of time to really work off some of the weight by then, and you could just make that fight happen sometime late summer, early spring, or early fall. And uh, so, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a very possible fight as well. Um, Man, I'm just looking at Dung Young Kim's uh, track record right now. He's 19 and two, with his two losses being to Carlos Condit and Damian Maya, two guys of which are on the top ten. And then the Damian Maya win, you know, kudos to Damian Maya. I still give it to him; it was a win, but it was like he just had a muscle spasm in that fight. Yeah, um, I mean that a loss is loss, though. So I'm not saying that it was like a like a lucky win or anything like that. But I'll still count that as a loss. But still, I mean, losing Damien, losing a Condit, that is nothing to be ashamed of. Have you seen? No. I mean, after those losses, I mean, it's just been leaps and bounds of improvement. Yeah, and he's beating all of the all of the old tag guys of, of who are, who are still good in their in their careers. Paulo Tiago, he beat the up and comers of CR and Eric Silva and John Hathaway. He's beating all these up and comers. A, 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 a win against a guy such as Lombard for uh, Dung Young Kim would be amazing for him. We move on to Mac Brown, who's number seven. We already know he's fighting Eric Silva. You've already given your prediction for that fight. I feel that fight being a, a, a complete freaking war. And I see, uh, I see uh, not Eric Silva getting knocked out in like the first round. I don't think Matt Brown's going to put him on, put him down that quickly. I feel it was like a second, third round TKO. For Matt Brown, I feel him being able to put it to him. Matt Brown is a fucking savage, All right? That guy goes in there, he gets in your face, and doesn't care what you put on him. Unless you can knock him out, he's gonna keep coming forward. And man, I just see that being a, a, an amazing fight. And I, I love Matt Brown. He's on like what a six fight win streak, seven. Matt Brown. Yeah. Six wins, yes, and five yeah, six or, wins or, or and TKOs and knockouts, yeah. The one thing I don't like about his style, I mean, it's fun to watch, but the one thing I don't like about his style is he comes forward a little cocky with his hands down and often making gestures. And he actually runs forward, too, which, if you know how to fight that, I mean, he's very open. That's the thing. That's the one thing I don't like. So that could leave him open to guys yeah. with big and, powers. And, and That's and where Silva can capitalize. Silva's jits is nothing to fuck with. I mean, he's got three submission wins, I believe. Um, yeah, but I mean, Matt Brown's very crafty too. I mean, like again, I mentioned this in the third podcast that you guys will never hear, but um, 
But in the Jordan Mean fight, he got rocked bad, and Mean knew his body was hurt, so he was hitting that body left and right, and he snatched up a triangle within like a fraction of a second. A beautiful triangle it was in deep. Crazy Jordan Mean for getting out, but he's got really crafty and great submissions too. He looks great. I mean, he saw against Mike Swick, he snatched up a quick uh, triangle too. So either way, I mean, I actually personally, I mean, yeah, I, I can probably gather that you guys can tell I'm a big Matt Brown fan, but. On the ground, I would still give him the advantage. Silva, of course, though, I think it's enough for him to handle. But I just see more ways of Matt Brown being able to win this. I can see Silva winning by capitalizing on Matt Brown being too open and coming forward. I can see that happening. I don't see that being very likely, though. Gotcha. Um, I think it's a... I, I don't agree with Matt Brown grappling better than uh, than Eric Silva, Eric Silva being a black belt. I don't know if Matt Brown's about black belt in any type of grappling. Uh, I know that he, he's, he's savvy enough, but guys have gotten to him before on the ground. Uh, even like you know Guys like Chris Lytle, Ricardo Almeida, but those are top-notch jiu-jitsu guys, but so is Eric Silva. Maybe not top-notch. Maybe I'm getting a little too ahead of myself with that, but um, I don't know. I just feel uh, that... Uh, on the ground, Eric Silva has the advantage. Maybe uh, the top ground game is where Silva wants to not be if, if Matt Brown can get on top. But if Eric Silva can get on top, maybe some type of back control or something, he's in trouble. Eric Silva's, you know, uh, uh, it says right here he's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. Hell, even I'm a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. I don't stand a chance against any black belts. I'll say that right now. <laughs> I get my ass twisted. But uh, I, it's an amazing fight. I think the advantage to striking goes to Matt. Uh, but you can never really count out Eric Silva standing up either. I mean, he did uh, in his first two wins, I believe, fuck some dudes up standing. Um, and I believe he has uh, quite a few good knockouts to his resume uh, before the... Um, yeah, just I think that that fight is all around fucking yes. Just awesome. It's just an amazing fight to watch. I can't wait. The poster looks badass. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. Um... I think that that fight makes a lot of sense. I'm glad they made it. That's one of those fights that the, the fans are just going to win no matter what. We move on to number eight, Damian Maya. <laughs> this guy's breaking my heart as of late. Because uh, <laughs> he's one of my favorite fighters in the UFC. I, I'm one of the, I'm one of the uh, uh, few admins here who does jiu-jitsu on a regular basis. So I, I appreciate watching jiu-jitsu, uh, especially somebody who can go into the UFC and uh, and and just and, and do the do what everything that they got to do. Apparently, he actually has a fight matched up. I just found this out. He's fighting Mike Pierce at the Ultimate Fighter Brazil three finale. Oh, okay, yeah, I heard yes. about that. Yes, I remember yeah. hearing about that, and I just found out about it right now. Um, or again, <laughs> that's a fight. That's a doable fight. It's fucking Mike Pierce. I mean, Husamon Parhara submitted him in his last fight. Mike Pierce now has to fight another Brazilian, which he might not be happy about. <laughs> but uh, that's a doable fight for him. I mean, it sucks that Damien's coming off two losses. He's beaten John Fitch, Rick Story, Dung Young Kim thus uh, thus far since being at welterweight. So uh, those are three good wins. But now that he's lost two in a row, he, it's kind of like, uh, what's going to happen if he loses this? He goes three and three, winning three and then losing three straight. And at this point, when you're losing guys like Jake Shields, it scares me. It really scares me that he could lose his job after the, if he doesn't beat Mike Pierce. Yeah, I see you laughing there, man. That's a real fear now. It's a real... <laughs> the fear is real. Um, um, I see him doing what... Wait, wait. In the Husamar fight, it was actually Pierce who decided to bum-rush Husamar, right? I believe so. I mean, yeah. that's a 40-second fight. I'm sure we could find it on here. Let's look. I think that's what happened was Pierce rushed Husamar, and Husamar was actually... I mean, I don't know about her, but he was in a little bit of danger. He ducked, got a leg. And I see Pierce, I really hope to God he doesn't do the same thing because that can still be in trouble against Demi and Maya. I see Maya doing what he does pretty much every single welterweight fight. Yeah, but you know, that. Maya, Maya isn't a cunt on the ground where he just like holds on to that bitch for, for days. Yeah, he just runs at you. I mean, it's like... Yeah, against one second. Rhythms. Hold on. Skipping his ad. I want to. I'm actually about to watch the Paul Harris submission here in Pierce, real quick. We'll play it right now. It's brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car Shut shot. that shit down. Mike Pierce moves forward. Damn. Yeah, he bull rushes the fuck out of Paul Harris. Paul Harris drops for the leg. 
He's already got his leg kind of locked up. Paul Harris is fighting the other leg to escape. Good escape. Goes for a head. Goes to try and grab his head, but Paul Harris has the leg. Moves in. Puts him against the cage. Drops onto his back to go for the leg again. When he had Paul Pierce against the cage, that's imp that's interesting. Oh, and there it is. And yeah, man, Pierce was just smacking the shit out of Paul Harris's leg, trying to tell him to let go. Um, yeah, that's not a good uh, it's not a good game plan when you're facing uh, Husamar Paul Harris. Um, uh, but I mean, the thing about there's a, there's a huge difference jujitsu wise with Paul Harris and Damian Maya. Paul Harris is a savage, and he goes for that leg like it's a, like like he's a raptor and it's a meal. You know what I mean? He fucking goes after Damian Maya is more technical. He's more methodical. I mean, he has the cardio to really withstand. Uh, going at it at a, at, a, at, a, at a decent pace to where he can go all three rounds at the same pace when he's trying to uh, grapple with you. Um, at the same time, I wouldn't recommend that Pierce does this kind of game plan where he just goes after him, makes it a fast-paced fight. I think Maya does do well in a fast-paced fight, though. I mean, look at the Chill of Sun if, I, if you remember it from UFC 95, I believe. Yeah, 95. Was it 95? I'm not looking because I don't know. Oh, that's a guess. But he, but if you look at Chael Sonnen, Chael put it on him. He was trying to make it a fast-paced kind of fight, and and Damian Maya does well under that kind of situation, I believe as well. I think he can do fine in a fast-paced situation. So if Mike Pierce brings it to him that way, I don't think it uh it, it bodes well for um for Pierce to go for that kind of fight to make it fast-paced. I think Maya, just like Paul Harris, can do well in a fast pace. I think Maya, Maya prefers the more methodical approach, which. Maybe he needs to kind of up the pace a little bit, but I think he does it more so for his cardio. Um, but, I mean, uh, Pierce makes this a fast-paced fight. I see, I see Maya submitting him in the second or third round, if not the first, um, or getting the decision if Maya, if Maya is able to implement his kind of fight where it's more technical, not as fast-paced. He's more he's more technical. He looks for the, the openings and, and tries to capitalize, not just create openings. Which Paul Harris tries to do by forcing himself onto the leg and dropping down, and putting himself in dangerous positions to go after submissions. You know what I mean? Yeah, and plus his attack is more varied. I mean, with Paul Harris, everyone knew what he was going to do, and I mean, I think Pierce had the idea of this guy can get hurt standing easily, but he rushed him and he closed that distance, which is what Paul Harris wanted, and he gave him what he wanted. With uh, Maya, what he's going to have to do is defensive wrestling, but also I, I feel like he should make it a close match, like as far as breaking that distance and doing what he loves to do, which is that Greco-Roman tie-up but at the same time, I mean, Maya's got beautiful throws from that tie-up I mean, you saw it against, the Chael, against Chael Sonnen, yeah. that was a beautiful throw into a submission mm -hmm. I mean, he tossed him right over his shoulder, he um, he actually landed in a mounted triangle and then bam, switched it over, finished it up from there I don't know. I mean, I see Maya just doing another Rick Story esque fight, bull rushes, gets him down, slams him because he is a pretty strong welterweight, even though he doesn't look like it. But he is strong yeah. to muscle someone he's like a, Rick Story. He's a decent size too. I think uh, I forget how tall Damian Maya is, but he 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 was he was a decent size at, at middleweight. You know, it wasn't like he was small compared to everybody. But uh, what is he? Six foot one. That's a decent size for a middleweight, but for a welterweight, it's pretty big. I mean, people say George was big, and he's only five eleven. Um, I think it's a. I think uh, Damian Maya, obviously in size, may not be uh, heavier than Pierce. Pierce is always is a is a short, stocky dude. Um, well, that's a good fight. It is a good fight. It's a, definitely the kind of fight that the that 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 will show us where Maya is. And if his spot in the top 10 is as deserving as it shows to be number 8 right now. Move on to number 10, Tarek Safadine. He's Ugh. one I don't really know what to do with. Yeah, I, I don't mean, know what to do with everyone him else, we, Everyone else above him, except for Lombard, is booked. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, man, yeah, I mean, man. you gotta have, you probably have to give him a... I wonder who takes Jake Shields' spot. Jake Shields on the way, the rankings. He was released today, so they're not. These aren't updated that we're looking at right now. Jake but, Shields is eleven, so he, he's actually below Safadine. Yeah, but I'm not saying that. Yeah, I mean, just wonder who takes his spot. Maybe Mike Pyle. I mean, as far as I understand, I don't think he has a dance partner yet. Let's look. I mean, I, as far as I understand, Mike Pyle. Mike Pyle. What what ranks is he? He's ranked number twelve. I'm not looking, so look for me. 
Who's ranked number twelve? Uh, who's yeah? I'm asking you. Is he ranked number twelve? Okay, so uh, um, Tarek Safadi nine, Dong Young Kim ten, Jake Shields eleven. But obviously he scratched he out. He beat T.J. Wahlberger in his last fight. Uh, obviously he scratched he out. He beat T.J. Wahlberger in his last fight uh, by TKO, and he's actually won five of his last six. His only loss is against Matt Brown. Matt Brown. Yeah, I mean he's been doing pretty hot. And prior to that, he lost to Roy McDonald about three years ago. Um, I mean, all together, let's look at all of his UFC fights. He has four losses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine and uh, four. That's not bad. That's a really good record all together if you count out up all the wins. And then you look at all the all the wins by finishes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six wins uh, by finish out of those nine. I mean, uh, he's and, and I was backing him for the Brown fight, mistakably so, obviously. <laughs> Uh, but, I mean, uh, him being in the top 15, at least, makes sense. And I think a fight uh, against a, a, a veteranized fighter like uh, uh, Pyle makes sense for Tarek Safadine when he comes back. Um, yeah, Pyle doesn't have a dance partner yet. That fight makes sense if Tarek Safadine... I don't even know what Tarek was uh, injured with. Um, do, do you have to know? I honestly don't. Yeah, I just know that he... I mean, I guess the fact that Robbie Lawler versus Jake Ellenberger kind of clouded the fact that Tarek was even injured at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, oh, shit, Robbie Lawler versus Jake. Who the fuck is the Safadin guy? Yeah, no, but I don't think anybody... Uh, undisclosed injury, so nobody knows. Nobody knows right now, so nobody knows how long he'll be out. Um, if, he, if he's not out for a long period of time, Mike Pyle fight makes sense. Uh... Actually, still going, Mike Pyle, because number 10, Dong Young Kim, but we've already talked about him. We've already said that we'd like to see a Lombard fight, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, Jake Shields being 11, but obviously scratch him out because he's not in the UFC anymore. Mike Pyle is 12, and Kelvin Gastelum is 13. I actually really like that fight. I like the sound of that. Or possibly Kelvin Gastelum being 13, Gunnar Nelson being 14. I like the sound of that, too. I like, yeah, I like the Gastelum-Nelson fight more so than I like the Gastelum-Pyle fight. I feel Pyle's a little, a little too experienced for Gastelum. Uh, Gastelum's only like two fights out of uh, off the Ultimate Fighter, even though he's looked impressive as all hell. Gastelum's only 22. Remember that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, he's a... Uh, Young kid, young dude. Gunnar Nelson's another up and comer, a little older, but uh, uh, he's got that up and comer kind of aura on him. But he's got that up and comer aura where everybody wants to see him fight. Everybody thinks he's just super impressive. Um, that's why I think uh, the fight with Pyle and Safadine makes sense. Safadine won the championship at Strike Force. Pyle, uh, if I remember correctly, was the WEC welterweight champion. Um, you know, so I mean, these guys are experienced. These guys have top wins uh, uh, in their in their book right now, and, and it makes sense to have that, and then have the Gastelum uh, Nelson fight next. So I mean, we could skip thirteen and fourteen there. Eric Silva, we already know, is fighting Matt Brown. So I mean, it kind of closes out the uh, our Walter rate rankings debacle here. Now, uh, I, I I am curious as to who will take uh, Jake Shields' spot on the rankings now coming up here. He'll probably just bumps uh, everyone up one, and I don't know who he'll put as the new 15. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everybody will get everybody behind Shields gets bumped up one, and somebody comes in for him. And so that's what I'm curious of. I'm wondering who's taking his spot. I want to look at the list of welterweight rankings here real quick, or the list of welterweight fighters altogether signed in the UFC. But uh, other than that, I think uh, if you had to pit Mike Pyle against Tarek Safety, how do you see that fight going? I think Mike Pyle could take that fight. Mm, I think so, too. Actually, you know what? You know what I can see being number 15 is, uh, I'm sorry if I butchered this name, guys, but Hyung Gyu Lim. I could see him being 15. The guy who fought uh, Tarek Safety earlier this year in January on the first Fight Packs card. That yeah. makes sense. Um, yeah. He's 2-1, though. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, he's looked impressive as hell. That's for sure. I mean, he's coming off a win, I believe. When did he last fight? Let's see. No, he beat uh, Marcelo Gomez at the Japanese event last year, and then beat Pascal Kraus, both of both of which were wins by KO. Then lost to Tarek Safadine. Two fight of the night awards. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's impressive of itself. Um, 
what is it? Uh, then after that, we um, what is it? I'm trying to look here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's definitely uh, hard to really put a, a stamp on the name here for who gets it. There's so many big names at welterweight. I mean, it's just surprising that it's gone on for so long that we haven't really seen it. I think Stephen Thompson, if he wins another fight, could definitely earn that 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 rank 15 spot. Yeah, that, I mean, uh, we'll never know. We'll find out in the next upcoming days. The UFC media members will definitely decide that. We've gone on. How long have we gone? 45 minutes. Not bad, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. We'll wrap yeah. this bitch up. MMA D fans, give us some comments, uh, concerns, anything you want to talk to us about. If you were offended by anything we had to say, go fuck yourselves because we get to talk about whatever we want. All right. We love you guys, though. Please give us some comments, some feedback, some ideas, anything you think you would like to change about us. Um, we definitely would like to hear any uh, feedback for sure. Um, give us some, uh, give us your comments. We love you guys, MMA D fans. Thank you, thank you, Chris, making his debut finally. This one will go up, I promise you. All right, see you guys on the next pod. And see you on the next one, Chris. I'll talk to you later, brother. Later. Right. Yep. Yeah.